Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome to round number 10 of the North American Grand Prix Thursday night GT series. Coming to you live from Okayama in Japan. This is the first ever running at this circuit for the GT cars and uh, pretty positive uh, responses from the guys on track. They seem to really love it, uh, Jack and the practice leading up i should introduce my uh, broadcast partner tonight jack ivy jack welcome uh, yeah gotta say, no need really to introduce it. me al the uh thursday crowd knows me well yes um beautiful track uh, looks like it's uh, set up nicely uh for most of the drivers thing and uh got some different marquees up there at the uh, front of the practice times oh i should switch it over to the uh the cars here yeah yeah, the, uh, so we just switched it over to qualifying, and the cars are making their way out for their outlaps. Uh, yeah, the guys are really uh, taken to this track as Kevin Kirkbride makes his way out, our championship leader. Let's take a quick look at the track map for tonight's race. It's going to be 54 laps around this Okayama circuit, uh, 11 corners. Uh, and I tell you what, the first, first and second sectors are pretty wide open. Uh, turn one, a bit of a uh, kind of a medium right-hand corner, but the the track really tightens up in the third sector. Very slow corners as these guys make their way out for their first attempts here in qualifying. 25 minutes in this qualifying session. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, you know, we saw the Porsche, you know, in early practice with John Lutton um, do real well. So some of the better handling cars are going to do well here. Uh, not going to be all about power tonight, Al. No, it really isn't. The uh, McLaren was looking strong. Some of the Lambo drivers were being a little coy in terms of their performance uh, last week's Zabo elected to give up some positions to save weight, but we're not going to know um, if that call was the right one here as these guys and the Lambo have been doing a lot of their, race, their practicing offline apparently. We're going to jump on board right now with Aaron Parsons in the Nissan who's been looking really quick here in the practices. Yeah. Yeah, both Parsons and Moses, uh, you know, have been turning some really good practice times out here uh, in the early going now. So um, they've got this Nissan hooked up, and, you know, that's good for PMR because, uh, you know, hasn't been the greatest of season for these two season veterans. So Parsons on his way into turn four at Wood Kerr. This first sector is pretty quick, uh, like I said, uh, to this, I guess, the back straight leading into turn five. Want to break as late as possible into this corner. You see Parsons about the 75 mark, and this is the part of the track really uh, where it really tightens up here. Some slow left hand corners, turns six and seven into turn eight. This turn nine is an uphill right hander kind of tricky to set up for into the last two corners turns 10 and 11 kind of medium speed right hand corners and you want to be able to carry as much speed as possible onto the front straight here yeah, and i've seen a lot of the guys take that wide but aaron persons uh, did not definitely take that wide but i see a lot of the guys running wide on that last corner there Aaron Parsons, two provisional pole with a 128 flat. Peter Zabo in second, eight hundredths of a second behind him. So that's the quickest lap we've seen uh, so far in all of the practice times. Uh, Salem Montgomery Jr. slotted up to third, about a half second off as he takes it off. All the guys yeah, out you know on what, the saucer. What, Go ahead. With Parsons and Moses, uh, you know, putting out some decent laps. Um, I'm interested to see how Andrew Werner is going to do this. He's out there in provisionally in fourth right now. Another set of uh, Nissans with uh, Werner and Poole. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle this. Zabo just about uh, as 
he gets it wrong. He's in 10th off in the first sector. Chris Moses has jumped up to third with a 128.5. So nice lap from Moses. I was talking to him earlier today. He was a little uh, despondent. Basically, I, I, kind, I of scratching you, his, kind of scratching his head. Don't know how you could be. You know, your, your teammates have got uh, uh, the fastest time I've seen this evening up there, and uh, he's sitting in uh, provisionally in third. So I don't know how you could be despondent about that. Uh, you know what? These guys are all getting cagey. Eh? So Hefner not going to improve currently in ninth. A lot of the guys on their outlets, David uh, Poole. Currently provisionally in fifth, 1.1 seconds off provisional pole time. Yeah, both Hefner and Kirk, Kirk Wright have both uh, expressed that they're not going to be able to do that well tonight. You know, um, carrying the baggage around, you know, uh, they both have 40 kilos, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they are both carrying 40 kilograms of success ballast here tonight. Brad Maris carrying 30. John Luton, I believe, carrying 10 for some penalty weight as we are on board with John Luton right now. Four tenths off in the first sector. Yeah, you know, mention of the penalties, Al. Uh, good lead in here. You know, last week, uh, you know, at Laguna Seca, and I thought that was an excellent, uh, you know, brilliant race last week. Um, no first lap penalty, so everybody kept it pretty clean there. But uh, a little guy did get some penalty. Uh, Lyndon got into uh, Montgomery Jr. He's carrying 10 kilograms. But Jesse Olsen, multiple blue flag warnings. He's going to have to do a drive through. And he's currently sitting in uh, provisionally P8. So that is going to cost him big time. Yeah, I mean, uh, the pit lane is not, uh, it's not very long, but he's, he's going to have to of that penalty here. Joe LaCour now coming in late here. Uh, on board with Peter Zabo. He is uh, green in the first sector. Let's jump on board with him. But yeah, this season has been very, very few first lap penalties. Uh, generally, we give uh, you know no call penalties for incidents in the first lap. And I think we've only had maybe two or three total this entire season as we're at lap 10, I mean round 10 now, so very good job by the guys. We do have some incidental contacts, half fall penalties, but nothing. Uh, this has been one of the cleanest seasons we've had so far. Yeah, you know, mention the incidental contacts. You know, I was looking at that list earlier, Al, and, you know, everybody's had, you know, maybe one, but nobody stands out there. Uh, nobody's getting out of control. Uh, for all you guys out there that want to join us on Thursday nights, you know, good, clean racing here by all the guys and lots of room for you. So uh, get in touch with the admins and uh, let's get set up for uh, next season. Dan Thorpe just set his best lap so far, currently in 10th. So Peter Zabo, who we were watching, does not improve. Salem Montgomery, uh, Montgomery Jr. currently slotted in fourth. Luke has jumped up to fifth. So I'm a little surprised to see quite a Quite a gap between uh, uh, Montgomery in fourth and then Luton in fifth. Uh, about half a second separating uh, those two uh, positions. Absolutely. Down. You know, we have seen, you know, upwards of 15 and 16 cars within a second of each other in qualifying. So, uh, you know, maybe the guys didn't get all the practice in that they should have been getting in on, uh, on this track. So Moses does a good job letting, uh, letting McKinney. Yeah, there's a new driver that's uh, really impressed me, Al, is uh, Michael McKinney. I nicknamed him M&M. &M. Um, boy, he's grabbed hold of that Ferrari and he's done a great job so far coming into the league brand new. And he's jumped up to fourth, uh, sorry, fifth. Uh, nine tenths off a provisional pole. Uh, pole. McKinney, yeah, he has really uh, proven that this Ferrari has pace. He finished on the podium at Imola and as well... Uh, a couple races ago, I believe, at Watkins Glen, if I'm not mistaken. So, McKinney is for real. And uh, I've raised 
close with him a number of times this season when I was out there, and he uh, really is one of the cleanest uh, guys I've seen in some time. He's a great driver. Nice and he likes to race close. Yep. I mean, he really likes to get on your bumper and push you uh, into making mistakes. So, uh, and I've watched him push you, Al, so, you know, it's... <laughs> It's good. So Parsons is hanging on to provisional pole that time he is set there. As David Poole gets it wrong at, I believe that was turn two. But uh, a lot of these guys were commenting on, or some guys were commenting on the curbing on exit on some of these corners. You really want to keep it tight because it is very tricky on exit. Um, the car gets um, a little out of shape. So these guys are going to have to be wary here as Hefner good enough for 10th. Zabo again is up in the first sector. He is making his way through sector 2 and he's dropped some time there in the second sector. Well, I'm showing him dead even on my timing here, so we'll see how he does in the final sector. I am Turn eight to turn the nine Mike and ten. Mike Warner. This is the part of the track where you think the McLaren would have an advantage. And, and it, it does did. as uh, Zabo moves up into provisional pole, besting uh, Aaron Parsons by nine hundredths of a second. So 127.9, the first driver we've seen. Uh, all week in the 27s. Moses remains in third. Yeah, and that was Peter's uh, personal best, too. Uh, so he's put down his PB right when he needed it. I just want to put a little shout out out there to all our viewers. Thanks for joining us tonight. GT Racing a Thursday night at NAGB. And I want to say a special shout out to Boris. Bernie and Donna. That's 05 Motorsports cheering section there. Uh, Andrew Warner and David Poole. Welcome. Ooh, Parsons up in sector two. Let's jump on board with him. Yeah, in the slower part uh, through Hobbs Corner. So I was listening in, uh, listening in on these two guys talking about uh, how to drive the car in the Nissan and one thing that struck me was they do not want to slide the car around they want to keep it tight and Parsons oh a 128 flat he bests his time but uh, not enough to take Zabo's position so six hundredths of a second separating those guys between uh, first and second so to follow that battle uh, about 12 and a half minutes to go here in this qualifying session yeah that was a great lap by uh, by Aaron Parsons and his teammate Chris Moses sitting right behind him too but you know a little ways behind him as far as timing goes but uh, sitting behind him and provisionally uh, P3 always struck me as uh, funny that you watch John Luton's bit off in the second sector first and second sector and this is a track where i would uh, expect the porsche to do quite well here yeah as soon as you get connected corners that porsche seems to really you know you know jump to life and have uh, a really good response you know but uh, you know th this track is going to be tiring for these guys by the end of the night out warner currently his teammate in seventh warner in eighth jesse olsen Audi running in ninth. Zach Hefner, first of the Lambos running in tenth. And I saw Hefner's time on the server. He set a 28 3 at some point. I just wonder if he just hasn't gotten a clean lap in. Oh, and there you go. 29 1 as Hefner jumps into seventh now. And Thorpe in 11th. His teammate uh, Matt Lehman back in 12th. Winner at 
Watkins Glen, Bat, uh, Brad Maris, a bit off pace here, 29-4. I think he's got a little more in it, as, is, as does uh, Kevin Kirkbride running in 14. So the Lambos with the weight definitely struggling here tonight. Sean Ricker currently in 15th. Chris Kozakow in the vet, another car that should do fairly well here, currently running in 16th. Followed by uh, Bjorn Heyman in 17th. Alos De, uh, De La Torre running in 18th. Jonathan Cuppet back in 19th. Jake Feemster filling in for yours truly in 20th. And Chuck Carter running in 22nd. We've got a few guys out tonight due to... Zabo was out, but it looks like he might have made a mistake in the final sector, so he backed out of it. We got a few guys out due to uh, uh, personal issues, so they're not going to be here tonight. So a little lighter grid than normal here as Aaron Parsons makes his way through the last two corners. Yeah, it's going to be gonna, interesting to see. Not oh, just not not enough there. He has improved on his time. Oh no, he hasn't. I'm sorry. So it's still a 128 flat for for Parsons. Chuck Carter, his personal best, still remains 22nd. Kevin Kirkbride now dips into the 28th with a 28.8, so eight tenths off of provisional pole. So a nice lap there for Kirkbride carrying 40 kilograms of ballast and uh, just disconnected for some reason. So that time will retain and he should be okay. Well, he, he I, I was in the pits earlier, uh, Al. He is having some brake problems. Oh, boy. Uh, of course, I just notified him that he didn't need the brakes. Uh, just uh, he used the gearbox and the... Uh, uh, he, he, he's a good enough driver. He should be all right out there. But he is having some mechanical issues and hope that the crew can get him sorted out. So Brad Maris has bumped Hefner down a spot. Brad has jumped into eighth. So it looks like the Lambos are kind of figuring it out here late in this session. David Poole is about to start a flying lap here. So what I, what I was going to say to you, um, Jack, as uh, the Bruins have chipped another one in, we'll talk about our little bet here in a moment. Um, what I find, uh, thanks for the update, Al. <laughs> what I always find uh, funny is... Are we, are we still in the second? <laughs> third. I always found it funny how some of these tracks here, so you got Parsons and Moses in the Nissan, we're in Japan, the car performing well here. You got tracks like Imola and Monza with a Lambo and the Ferraris always do well at. It's funny that these, these tracks where, I guess these home tracks for these manufacturers, these cars tend to do quite well at. Well, this track looks like fun. Um, now, you were mentioning about pit entrance, uh, a little dicey. Well, the pit entrance here, you're going to have to come in as David Poole pulls it off. But the pit entrance here is before turn 10. So these guys are going to have to come in uh, inside of turn 10 and 11. But it uh, shouldn't be too bad as long as they uh, maintain speed as Parson goes green in Sector 2. Well, he is trying hard to get that point zero six one taken away from uh, Peter Zabo. Nice exit through turn 11. Is this going to be enough for pull for Parsons? No. He's not, he's not he going to complete out of it. it. He backed out of it. So he wasn't uh, wasn't able to improve in that final sector. He must have saw his delta time go up. And elected to back out of it. Just over six minutes to go in the session. 
Yeah, just a little FYI out there for all the viewers tonight. Um, Al's car is uh, experiencing uh, technical difficulties, so he is graciously joined the Thursday night broadcast. Uh, and thanks, Al. Thanks for coming in and saving the day. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Jake, for filling in for me. And uh, yeah, I should be out there, but uh, some issues with Fanatec and their shipping department and their sales department and every other department has prevented me from being out there tonight. So. As we jump on board here with John Luton. He has been unable to improve his position here. Matt McKinde has is running in sixth. But Luton unable to pick up any time here. He is half a second off in the first sector. Pretty remarkable, these sector times. The, the McLaren has been by far the quickest in the first sector. The Nissans have been, uh, the Nissans of Parsons and uh, Moses have been quick through the first sector, but every other car seems to be a bit off or haven't figured it out. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's real tough sort of coming from behind. You know, once you're behind, you tend to over push, overdrive the car, and it's going to be real hard to make up that time in the last two sectors when you're down out of the gate. Big correction there from Luden on exit of turn 11, and he is not going to improve. Remains in seventh. Moses could potentially improve upon his time. I do not think it's good enough for second. No, no, it, it probably won't be, Al, but uh, might improve the time just slightly. No, nope, he looks like he's going to pull it off, too. Larson's on an out lap. Zabo on an out lap. Montgomery, as Joe LaCour sets his personal best, Montgomery. Six tenths off, nearly uh, six and a half tenths off of his teammate. So, both those guys not carrying weight. Uh, they've been pretty close in terms of pace, um, those two guys. But uh, it's like Zabo has figured something out in the McLaren. Or has figured out a few lines here that Montgomery has not been able to, uh, to match here. Yeah, they... You know, they put the, together some impressive team numbers, Al, so uh, good on those guys in the same podium hunters. I mean, two strong, strong teams this year. So we've seen uh, Johnny Mack has joined us. Oh, yep. They let him across the border back into his home country. So he it's nice to see him back here in the server. Zabo is up a tenth in sector two. Kirkbride, meanwhile, has jumped up to fifth. Looking strong. He's back in the server. Let's see what Zabo can do here if he can improve upon his time. Yeah, both uh, Kirkbride and Hefner, you know, uh, sitting uh, fifth and eighth, uh, you know, carrying all that weight, uh, doing a great job here tonight. Uh, a little different. Um, Kirkbride running with the mediums and Hefner out there on the uh, softs. So Larson Street tents off in sector one. He's been strong in the second and third sectors. Zabo pulled it offline, so he was not able to improve in the last two corners. Very tricky corners. You take too much of the inside curbing at turn 10, really upsets the car, and um, they'll end up losing time on exit at turn 10. I think that's why some of these guys are just uh, pulling it offline before they even cross the finish line, just to get more time to put a lap, uh, start a new lap. 
Well, we are winding down here. So we see Parsons even through sector two. He's going to end up here and well, he yanks it out. Yeah, he yanks it offline. Moses, meanwhile, is a tenth off in the first two sectors. Oh, he takes it way wide on sector, exiting the final corner. And, and he throws he, the anchor out, too. Yeah, he threw it out. That was a good lap from Moses, but uh, couldn't nail down that final sector. Uh, let's see, Hefner, three tenths off. Top 10 have remained status quo here. No change really among those guys with 13 seconds left in the session. Let's see if Hefner can improve his time. Three tenths off in the first two sectors. Like I said, he was down in the mid 28s in practice, but just not, not able to match that pace here in this qualifying session. Oh, and he runs it way wide. Way wide. But he still may be able to improve on upon his time. Brad with a mistake. Uh, no, no improvement for for Hefner. So Zabo remains on the flying lap. Parsons and Moses in the pits. They have called it. They are going to remain second and third, unless Montgomery can pull a rabbit out of his hat here and have to be a big rabbit yeah. <laughs> a, a, a jack rabbit or a magic rabbit or else he'll sit right where he is not going to improve here let's see Kirkbride So it's just uh, Hefter and Kirkbride. No, well, Zabo's still on a flyer, but he did not improve. Well, Kirkbride is done. Yeah, they, both those guys are done. So the session is pretty much over. They're not going to improve upon their time. Peter Zabo is your pole setter here at Okayama. Very nice lap, 127.9. And a great lap from Aaron Parsons right behind uh, Zabo. Six hundredths of a second. Can't get any closer than that between those two. And then quite a quite a big uh, gap between uh, the first two and third. Half a second separating first and third. This is uh, That's a, it's the biggest biggest gap I've seen all season. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Jack. Very uh, very spread out here. You know, we, we've got lots of cars within a second usually, but uh, it looks like, you know, we're only going to have, you know, six cars within, uh, well, actually, Brad, Brad has pulled it into literally a one-second flat, so we've got seven cars within a second of each other. going to be interesting to see what the race pace is going to be like. Um, you know, I just, I hate to see a runaway. And I don't think, I, it looks like the pace is going to be pretty similar. So Zabo, Parsons, and Moses, one, two, three, and maybe Montgomery hanging on to the back room. The extra 40K for a Kirk ride is going to make it tough for, for Kevin tonight. So, Jack, as the Bruins go up 5-1, do you want to really quickly run down our little bet? I'll go shopping tomorrow, Well, <laughs> It's only one game, Jack. Still <laughs> You're right. Time. You're right. You're right. And you know what? They've only had two bad periods. First period was pretty even there. All right. Well, we'll touch on our bet a little later here. Let's run down the uh, standings here for uh, the Thursday season 33 uh, Drivers' Championship. Kevin Kirkbride is the leader with 158 points. Uh, Peter Zabo, we questioned it last week, Jack, uh, why he elected to back off and, and take the... Uh, get receive less weight as opposed to the points, but hey, he's on pole tonight, barely, but he is second with 137 points. We'll see if that move pays off for him tonight. Zach Kefner third with 135. Um, Montgomery Jr. in fourth with 109, and my teammate Brad Maris in fifth with 101 points. 
in the team championship podium hunters leading with 293 points rpm extreme that's uh zabo and montgomery jr with 246 uh, precision motor racing has jumped up to third that's parsons and moses 164 gotta go by that's uh brad maris and myself and jack uh, jake feemster who is filling in for me 162 points and then we have a tie for fifth between 05 motorsports and empire state racing with 104. uh pretty uh Pretty good lead right now for Kirkbride going into the final uh, final three races here. Uh, Kirkbride, it's going to be tough for Zabo to pick up pick up those uh, points. However, Kirkbride starting in fifth here. He's got to just run a clean race, score some decent points. He should be good to, to go the next the next three races, Jack. I don't uh, unless something catastrophic happens. He hasn't he hasn't lost a lap all season. He's completed every one. I don't see it happening at this point. Well, you know, both those teams, you know, Podium and RPM, you know, they put up some, you know, incredible numbers as far as I'm concerned, Al. I mean, uh, uh, both the teams have done real well, and it's going to, you know, there's going to have to be a catastrophic failure somewhere uh, for it to change much uh, going in play, as you said, the last three races. Sorry. With the minute to go, let's run down the starting order here tonight. Jack. Peter Zavo taking the poll. Aaron Parsons in second. Chris Moses third. Salem Montgomery in fourth. And Kevin Kirkbride in fifth. Michael McKinney's going to start in sixth, followed by Brad Maris in seventh. Uh, sorry, Zach Hefner going to start eighth. John Luden ninth. David Poole going to start in tenth. Andrew Werner in 11th, Jesse Olsen in 12th, Dan Thorpe in 13th, Matt Lehman in 14th, and Sean Ricker in 15th. John Heyman with a nice qualifying session, going to start in 16th. Chris Kozakow as well with a nice start here in 17th. Dean Jolicor going to start 18th. Carlos De La Torre, 19th. Jonathan Cuppet going to start 20th. And then last two, it's going to be Chuck Carter, 21st, and Jake Feemster, 22nd. And actually, John McIntyre going to start back in 23rd. Any predictions here tonight, Jack, before we go green? Parsons for the win. Wow, it's going to be a sweep this week for Parsons if he can do it. Winner, winner on Monday night. And we are green from Okayama. Great start from the front, too. And a great start from Montgomery Jr. Back and forth. Nice, clean going through the first corner for the whole pack. Nice start from the field. Just a whole bunch of professionals out there, Al. They sure are. Field making their way into turn four. Yeah, a little close between the uh, Audi of uh, Purple Helmets and Empire State. Mercedes, well, but uh, I don't see any contact there between those two guys. No, it, it, it's been uh, nose to tail and all good. Johnny Mack gets turned around, though, at the back here. Oh, Kirkbride has it turned around. Oh, and a big contact with one of the Audis. So Kirkbride with damage. He was side by side with McKinday, and I think he just took it a little too deep into that corner. It looks like that's might have been Jesse Olsen who got into the side of him, but uh, Kirkbride is still out on track and back in 18. So Brad, we talked about it. He's been pretty lucky. Oh, he's one of the other Lambo's takes the wide. Olsen into the pits. Kirkbride has got big time damage. Carl Steotori took out uh, Bjorn Heyman just now. But Kirkbride will have to go into the pits, and that is going to put him way down in the standings, although he still has, he's got, you know, 52 laps to recover. Well, Brad Maris has picked up some spots up to sixth and chasing down Michael McKinday. 
in the fifth position. What a great start from Zaba. Already 1.5 seconds clear of Parsons in second. Brad looking on the outside of McKinday. Nothing there. Zach Hefner right behind these two. Looking to take advantage. But, uh, well, talked about Hefner. He's been pretty lucky up uh, till this point. But I think that was a self-induced mistake, Jack. I didn't see any contact there. Uh, yeah, I was watching, uh, you know, some other traffic as I made right now uh, further back in the back. So can't really comment on that, although he is going to be uh, at, a, at a severe disadvantage if he doesn't get in and get that fixed up. Chris Moses, meanwhile, has a determined uh, Salem Montgomery Jr. behind him. But see Moses really gapping uh, Montgomery Jr. going into turn number one here. Yeah, it's always Parsons that's fast lap of the race. It looks like uh, the McLaren just not able to match that straight line speed of the Nissan. Meanwhile, McKinney doing his best to fend off the Lamborghini behind. What a great start from McKinney. Uh, yeah, but uh, you definitely know Brad's going to put all sorts of pressure on uh, Michael, so it's only going to take one little bobble. And not just Brad Barris, but Zach Efter's in the catbird position. He may end up uh, taking advantage of it as well. So, big pressure up again there right now early in the race. Looking further back, Dan Thorpe with a train of cars behind him. You got uh, Luton, Ricker, and Lehman behind. We're gonna jump on board with Sean Ricker in the Audi. So I believe, I think that might have been Olsen who had contact with, uh, with Hefner, I'm sorry, Kirkbride in the Lamborghini to start the lap, to start the race, as uh, it's like uh, Ricker's car looks pretty clean. But Thorpe really under a lot of pressure from John Luton. It's going to be a tough task for Luton to get around Thorpe. That uh, Mercedes has a lot of grunt. Well, there there is quite a train in there behind, uh, you know, Luton's in behind Thorpe, but John Ricker's sitting back there, and Matt Lehman as well, so... You know, you got Empire State uh, Motor Racing doing real well here. You know, running uh, 9 and 12 right now. This uh, Kozakow with a nice start up to 14th. David Poole has fallen back to 15th and is trying to chase down Chris in that vet. Back to the fifth spot. McKinley still leading Maris and Hefner. with a nice run here in eighth. Yeah, Werner got himself into a nice position here, you know, where he's uh, catching up to that group in front of him of uh, Hefner and Harris and McKinney. As they battle it out, it's allowing, I think, uh, maybe some uh, uh, some gains for Andrew Werner if he can put in some good, clean laps. Ian Jolacor, I think, came in late in practice, has really not had had any practice whatsoever. He was running at 13 with 40, 40 kilograms on board of that Porsche. I think he, uh, that's pretty remarkable. But back uh, back to the fourth position here, uh, the, third, the battle for third, I should say. It's uh, Moses and Montgomery Jr. duking it out here. Parsons, meanwhile, ripping out fast laps, 28-9. Personal best and starting to close the gap on Peter Zaba for the lead. Well, you know, he can't let Peter, you know, get away from him because if he does, Peter's just going to put in hot lap after hot lap. And uh, we've seen it happen in the past, Al. You know, the guys get too far out and they just run away with it. But, uh, you know, if anybody can run somebody down, and I've watched it for the last seven years, Aaron Parsons, as long as he's got you in sight, He's a weapon. It certainly is. And it's a McLaren Nissan uh, battle here between one through four as those two makes uh, have the first four positions locked up and battling each other out here as uh, oh Montgomery. Brad Maris. What has happened to Maris? He has dropped to twelve. So Maris has dropped. Uh, number of positions here did not catch that. He was running behind McKinday in six, and 
has now fallen back to 12th. It's now Hefner trying to make hay here and close the gap on McKinley. But McKinley's starting to gap uh, Hefner here a little bit. Now, as you were mentioning earlier, Al, you know, uh, they were trying to keep the knee stands nice and smooth. Uh, I've been watching Chris Moses. He's getting typically loose, and Montgomery is all over his tailpipe right now. That was specific instructions from his teammate. Do not slide the car around. You're not going to go as quick. So Moses got to gather that thing back up and uh, keep it tight, tight. But uh, John Luton has gotten around Dan Thorpe and Ricker and Lehman now fighting it out for the ninth position. And I should say, this track, uh, especially in the third sector, the, right at the end of this back straight here, once it starts tightening up, it is really, really easy to overdrive uh, in the third part of this track. And uh, it looks like some of these guys may have You know, overdriven a little bit, seeing some guys who are further up in qualifying falling back here a little bit. Well, uh, thanks for the shout out from David Morris on the chat. He said the uh, T Bone uh, was by Olson, so it looks like um, Kirk Bride's misfortune was caused by just Olson. Well, to be fair, I didn't think, uh, I'm not sure if Olsen actually saw Kirk right there. Kirk right had spawned, I believe, on his own, so it's kind of a... It's, well, it's, as usual, Al, the CC committee will sort this all out. Yeah, they certainly will, but uh, I don't want to throw blame on anybody just yet. So, Ricker so, contending uh, sandwich between a pair of Mercedes here on lap 7. So, 54 laps. Expect these guys to come in around lap 27. Some guys may pit a lap or so early. Or maybe stretch it out a little bit. Interesting, just an FYI. Uh, Ian Jolker uh, just pulled over and let David Poole uh, climb up through. So, uh Ian may be seeing some pace that uh, David had over him and let him uh, go through real cleanly. Good on Ian. So our championship leader running in 15th with Chris Kozakow in 16th. And Chris doing a really the starting uh, with us a couple races ago. Scored some points last week at Laguna Seca. And running in the points here tonight. So good job by Chris wrong there though but uh ah, that's all right you know he had his trouble in the uh, very first race he started uh pedals gateway uh, had all sorts of trouble at the start line but uh you know he, he said he was gonna get a turn around and he sure has you know to get points here in uh, in agp is uh, a, a privilege al you know you really have to be on your game to get up there and uh, garner some points here either monday or thursday night so Montgomery Jr. has really closed the gap up on Chris Moses. He is glued to his rear here as they enter turn four. Montgomery had a look on the inside of turn one, but nothing there as they're going to go. Not going to go side by side. Oh, you see that Nissan starting to pull away down the straight. This is going to be a frustrating night here for the McLaren of Montgomery Jr. Yeah, it always is, uh, you know, to make all sorts of gains and through the twisty bits and just lose it on basically a non-technical uh, straight part of the track. It uh, can get frustrating and uh, can cause you to uh, maybe push the limits where you shouldn't be. But uh, not too far behind them is McKinney and Zach Hefner. Yeah, that gap has uh, widened here for about uh, couple tenths of a second here. And I don't know, you know, we sort of missed what happened to your teammate, Brad Marison. He's down in 12th, and he's in behind Matt Lehman, Sean Ricker, and Dan Thorpe right now. So uh, he's clawing his way back up. Gap out front. 
has increased to 1.6 seconds as Zabo continues to lead. Parsons does have fast lap of the race, 128.8 just over Zabo. Jolacour is done. He has pulled the shoot. Wow. So we have our first retirement of the night. Oh, Chris Kozakow is out as well. Chris, I did not see him leave, but he is I out. I didn't see that, sorry. That's too bad. I was just busy uh, checking lap times and uh, missed that altogether. So we just commented, uh, commented on how well he was doing. Well, I guess we thought he was doing better than he was, than he thought. Not sure what uh, what happened to him, but he is up. So we're on board here with Brad Maris. This is the battle for the ninth. Dan Thorpe and leading the way. Yeah, this oh, is going to be tough. tough. Technical issues causing Chris to to uh, leave the race. So that's unfortunate, Chris. We uh, were just commenting on how well you were doing. Well, uh, oh, that's Richard two defending races the now. inside here on Lehman. Lehman. Oh, he got a chance for a little over under action here. Nope. So tight in through uh, that Williams corner as well. I, you know, not a lot of room there. This is only going to help Dan Thorpe. Uh, these guys fighting to the nail. See if uh, Lehman has a look on the inside. Oh, oh, Ricker takes wrong. it wide, and Lehman. Maris going to try and take advantage here. Whoa, 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 whoa! A big draft here, and there goes Brady swinging out. Brad having a look on the inside here of Lehman. Oh, oh some contact, oh. and Brad muscles his way through. And that's, John Ricker makes it too. So, <laughs> and that drops uh, Lehman down two spots. Starting to look like NASCAR out there. So Brad saw a gap and went for it. Oh, and he took it, takes it a little bit wide. At turn seven, sorry eight, and these guys have settled back down here. So Brad. Picking up two spots. Just a couple corners here. That's got to get Lehman. Uh, that, that would have me a little uh, perturbed. As Lehman now looking on the inside of Ricker. But well, I, you know, I got to think that, you know, maybe Brad was, uh, you know, having a little bit of angst there because we didn't see what happened. But he got bumped down, you know, to like 13th. So, you know, 14th. So he's trying to make his way back up here and probably knows he has pace on these guys if he can get by him whoa brad taking it way wide there and sean rigger having a look on the inside oh the sapner has made his way past uh mckinday that battle is close let's pick up mckinday here see if he can get that position back he is all over the back of hefner how McKinney likes to race though you know he likes to be in tight in behind guys and wait for a little mistake so you know or maybe Zach's got some uh, some pace on him but uh, I don't think McKinney's gonna let him run away with it <laughs> Mark DeGras someone complained that that was a super dive bomb by uh, Brad DeGras, as a fan, I want to see action in the stands. That's funny. <laughs> so, DeGras likes the move. Lamansky did not like it. We'll see how Lehman liked it. Well, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still almost in lockstep there. Dan Thorpe's a big winner out of that one, but uh, Brad Mayer, Sean Ricker, and Matt Lehman are... Uh, Still running fairly close together. McKinney and Hefner. Uh, Hefner is starting to get a little bit of a gap there. Oh, the 
tracks. Uh, see Kevin chiming in. Well, first guy, question for Kevin is, why aren't you out here, number one? Number two, Kevin is... Uh, Lilski? Klemanski? Track builder of a number of great tracks. Rich Hampton, most recently, Watkins Glen. Yeah, no, a lot of these guys uh, really enjoy this track. It's it's actually very well done. Well, if he's questioning why you're not out there, Al. No, no, no. I'm questioning why he's not out there. I am, too. That was my question. You grab your wheel. Get in on this, some of this action here. So Moses, meanwhile, continues to run in third. To pick up this... Uh, this battle here for, for the uh, last podium position as Montgomery Jr. has been glued to the back of Moses since uh, the green flag, but unable to get around. He gets close to the twisty bits, but uh, just unable to, 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 to pull on him down the straight. That uh, Nissan has a lot of grunt. The gap between first and second remains uh, about a second and a half. Zabo has Reclaim fast lap of the race of 128.15. So we'll keep our eye on that as Brad Maris starts to reel in Dan Thorpe. Let's see if how Brad manages to get around Thorpe. Yeah, you know, Zabo and Parsons are turning, you know, very, very similar lap times. Uh, you know, so it may come down to uh, maybe a bit of, I heard that clink in there, Al. Um, may come down to a little bit of uh, uh, pit strategy and who can get in and get out. Yeah, well, the the, the Lambo for sure is not going to have Monty, an advantage. Monty on Chris Moses. Having a look on the inside. Chris holding his line, close the door. Yeah, just uh, Montgomery Jr. is just not able to to get position to make the pass. Both guys doing a good job there, keeping it off each other. As uh, Montgomery has a look on the inside, but the torque of the on. Look at you can see right from this onboard how much that Nissan just pulls away from the McLaren down the straight. So it's going to take a mistake from uh, Moses in order for Montgomery Jr. at this point to get around, or if he can beat him out of the pits. I mean, McLaren's going to have an advantage in refuel times in the pits, and the Lambo as well. Not. Very thirsty cars, both the, the Nissan and the Lamborghini. So, see how all that plays out. Yeah, you know, Salem is looking for a way around it, but, you know, Chris is uh, driving his lines. He, he looks a little loose at times, but he's, he's, you know, he's hitting the apexes nice. And as you said, once he gets on the straight bits, you know, unless. Salem is tucked right up underneath him. There is no way he's going to catch that. He said down the straights. Looking at the lap times, it's pretty amazing. The top two running at nearly identical times, 28.8. And then you got third and on down at 29. So the guys up front, the top two, nearly, nearly a second quicker than the rest of the field. As Hefner begins to close up on Montgomery Jr. And... Moses McKinday has dropped a couple seconds to Hefner, so Hefner really turning the screws here. Werner, meanwhile, is closing up a little bit on McKinday, so things are going to be interesting here in a while, and Luton's not too far back. Yeah, Luton doing a good job tonight in uh, the Porsche. You know, everybody was, uh, you know, heard lots of guys uh, out there chatting afterwards saying, uh, you know, oh, the Porsche isn't that great a car. Well, it, it is a great car. You know, and John Luton showing it tonight here, you know, in uh, P8.
Yeah, we got a little farther back. We got David Poole all over the back end of Matt Lehman, and Lehman looking a little loose right now. Yeah, I was going to comment on that. I saw him run a little uh, rag in a couple corners here, but he, uh, David Poole, I'm not sure what happened to him, ran into some issues, but he's recovered here and starting to close up on Lehman and really tightening up this battle here for, for ninth. This is uh, ninth through 13th, relatively close to one another. And, you know, it's a good observation by you, uh, Al, you know, as I watch some of these guys going around, you know, if they can keep it in the black, uh, they seem a lot steadier. But these curbs look like they're really causing these guys to slide around a lot on exit. Yeah, that was one of the uh, concerns here. And one of the mentions I made in the uh, driver's meeting is for these guys to be aware of the curbing on exit. I'm sure they all know, you know, based on their practice. But some of these cars, some more than others, can withstand some of these curbs more, but uh, the Nissan in particular has a tough time on the pumps. Okay, just a little FYI. You know, the gap up front has closed down a bit as Peter Zabo is coming up to lap traffic. Zabo coming up on Feimster and Jesse Olsen. Whoa, Jake is disconnected. At Al, you're, you're going to have to cancel that contract. You yeah, know that. yeah that's, not, that's not good, Jake. Ooh, Kyle Delatore out as well. So, Zabo has got around Jesse Olsen. So, that gap now down to 1.2 seconds as Parsons uh, has to contend with Olsen as well. Should not be an issue. This is uh, Moses. As you see, the, the, uh, the gap, the timing here has been red pretty much the entire race. And good on Jesse. He's pulled it over and thrown the brake out. Uh, to let Aaron Parsons by, so maybe the drive-through has made its point. Brad Maris trying to get a run on Dan Thorpe. I just picked up that battle. I gotta tell you, I've raced Dan a number of times here this season, man. It's not easy to get around him. Brad's going to have to force him into a mistake at some point to get around him or somehow try and beat him in the pits. As we're working lap 17 of 54, pit window's going to be lap 27 for these guys. Yeah, you know, I mentioned it earlier. You know, I think, you know, uh, Dan and Matt have done a great job there with the uh, Mercedes, uh, you know, and put a lot of practice and prep into it and you know are, are the first ones out to you know to put kudos on each other on the other driver uh, for setup and help so they've done a great job so far this season. David Poole meanwhile has gotten around Matt Lehman for 12th. Lehman close to Poole but not close enough to make a move into turn one. Two big power cars here. As he's keeping David uh, honest here and making him work. Oh, we've, we've got, got Dan Thorpe, Thorpe and Brad Maris. Both went wide or off. Might have had some contact there. Lehman's going to get past Maris. Poole and Lehman taking advantage of that. So uh, now Dan Thorpe, it looks like uh, uh, Brad is letting Dan take that position. Yeah, so it looks like Brad might have uh, got, got into Thorpe and uh, knocked him off track and is letting him back by. So good sportsmanship there from Brad. But uh, I would expect nothing less from our resident driving instructor, Brad Maris. But uh, you know now he wants to take the, the spot back. Thorpe, I'll tell you what, he has really improved this season. He has been driving phenomenally and has been getting his 
career best results here in any GP this season in the Mercedes. So no doubt uh, a little frustrated by that, but uh, he's going to get back at it. But that's allowed uh, Poole to jump into the top ten, and uh, Ricker, meanwhile, is like, this is beautiful. I'm by myself now running a night. Thank you. Yeah, Parsons man, you know, now has closed up to within half a second of well, he's Peter got Zabo and lap, Kevin Kirkbride. Kev, uh, see, I'm not sure what happened to Kirk. Has Kirkbride pitted already? He may yes, have. he did. He, he so pitted he has got pitted. his damage fixed. And Chuck Carter and Kirkbride has, have moved over, and that's allowed Peter Z uh, Parsons to close up to Peter Zabo to within five-tenths of a second. Things are starting to get interesting here on lap 19, 20. Just click lap 20. Yeah, you know that lap traffic. You know these guys are are seem to be getting out of the way pretty pretty cleanly, but you know um, they're running so close together in lap times, Al. You know it's only going to take you know less than tenths to close this gap. And the thunder from down under, uh, boy, if he's within half a second, he's smelling blood right now. Kevin, our resident track master here, says he's, uh, uh, he's got an issue with the track. And it looks like Peter Zabo just took that corner. Yeah, made a little mistake. Slow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he's starting to feel the heat now from Parsons. Parsons, uh, winner Monday night, his first win of uh, season 33 on Monday. Well, you know, Zabo might be feeling the heat, but I know his, uh, you know, Aaron's teammate uh, Chris Bose has been feeling all sorts of heat from Sale Montgomery as well. So we got big races going on here from first and second to third and fourth. This has got to be the first time this season this has gone on like this now. Two hundredths of a second separate the best laps from these two guys. Let's take a look at Zaba's last few laps here. He's uh, last time by a 129.2 at uh, 130 flat. Parsons, meanwhile, 20 just matching matching lap times with Zaba. Yeah, they're 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 doing a phenomenal job here out front. Uh, you know, they're almost. Uh, 17 seconds ahead of B3. Moses and Montgomery Jr. matching lap times as well. But that gap between first and third is 18 seconds. So. Yeah, and growing. You know, now. Um, Ooh. Moses takes it a little bit deep into turn four. Yeah, he's been doing that. Uh, I watched him do that a few times now. Um, Maybe his natural line. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to, you know, uh, phase him at all. I mean, uh, Salem gets to close up on it, but then Chris just drives away. Chuck Carter and Jesse Olsen somewhat close. Carter running in 19th. We've had four retirements so far tonight. Yeah, and you know, um, doing a good job back there. All the guys are. You know, Kevin uh, Kirkbride. Now, I, I suspect he went in and tanked up and took all the fuel he's going to need to go to the end. So, um, he's not going to end up back there in 17th. That's for sure. I would think. So that's the Brad's. Uh, oh, Brad pulling it into the pit lane and gets it wrong. Carrying a little too much speed. So Brad coming in on lap 22. Interesting call here from Maris. Chuck Carter has called it a night. So that's five retirements here. So we only got 18 running so far. Running in 17th, 
minute on lap 17. And running in the last couple times by 130, mid-130s. So, let's see if he comes out anywhere near Maris Luton. Back in 15th, he has pitted also. I believe he's pitted. On a 2.02 on lap 20. So, this guy's uh, some interesting calls here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I, I have no intel on that. I usually uh, go in and ask the guys ahead of the race, you know, so I have a little heads up. But uh, I'm a little blind tonight. I was a little distracted earlier by the uh, hockey game, which Al is going to let me know what's going on. Right about All right, now. speaking of the hockey game, so, Jack, tell them, let, let, let everybody, uh, fill everybody. Ooh, as uh, David Poole makes a little mistake. That's a lot Lehman to really close up on him, but uh, let, let, let everybody know a little bet, a uh, little wager. Well, if the Boston Bruins do, by, you know, some miracle, tend to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, in this round of the playoffs, I will wear a Boston Bruins hat, take a picture of myself and post it up on the forum. Now, if the Boston, if the Toronto Maple Leafs win, uh, Al's going to have to uh, go out and buy a Toronto Maple Leaf hat and do the same. So stay tuned. It's going to be exciting all the way to the end. Bruins in Toronto. Uh, what's the update, Al? Uh, it was 5-1 when I last checked. So, uh, Ouch. Yes. Ouch. It's going to be a tough... I would start chopping around now, Jack. If you want to... Do you like fitted hats or... I mean, what? Uh, I I will probably look for the rattiest Boston hat <laughs> I can find. You know, maybe in Whoa. a second-hand store. Yeah, as Montgomery Jr. He nearly gets into the back of Chris Moses. But the uh, question Chris, was asked. Chris catching a bit of dirt there. Yeah, question was asked if we've ever run this track at GTF2. Yeah, we've run it a number of times in GTR2. If you remember that in the GT2 cars, no, we ran it a few times in GT1. Yeah, Chris, way wide on that corner yeah, again. He was wide. Meanwhile, Hefner has really closed up on these guys. After best lap 129.4, so he is actually running quicker than the guys in front of him. So Hefner really making uh, making well, some moves he, here. And Salem having a look on the inside, and I think he's going to take Chris here. I don't think so. I think that uh, Nissan's got Bauer. some legs, yeah. yeah he's, we talked about it. That was as close as I've seen him, though. So the pit window is starting to open up here for these guys. Absolutely, and that's why I have to close that gap here. He's lost, he's lost his fuel weight. Uh, I know the other guys have, too, but... You know, let's, let's get real. I mean, you know, Hefner and uh, Kirk Wright have done a great job with these Lambos this season. Putting a squeeze on Salem here. So taking a look at that gap out front. That gap has increased to about two seconds between Zabo and Parsons after it closed up to about half a second. So Zabo really turning the screws here late. Uh, still hasn't improved on his best lap, but... Yeah, that Hefner is flying right now, though. You know, once he got around McKinday, you know, he has put a six-second gap between himself and McKinday since he got around him. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, considering Hefner carrying 40 kilograms of ballast. So Hefner going to pick up points on his teammate at the moment. But uh, Kirk Ryan, meanwhile, one lap down. These guys up ahead of him still need to pit, so he could potentially pick up his lap. But we'll take a look at the competition index. So it's an award we give out for the driver that uh, completes the most distance in a season. So that goes to. Not a prize that you know the fastest guys win. We've had many times where guys who just consistent have consistent results 
finish and uh, consistent results and non-DNFs. They have won many. Um, yeah, you know, you can have a guy win the championship, and if he's got one DNF or a one bad finish in, uh, you know, in his season there, uh, it leaves the door open for the most consistent driver. So Kevin Kirkbride and Zach Kefner are the only two guys through nine races who have completed every lap this season. 2034 2034.794 kilometers and Moses into the pit lane. I'm sorry, that was uh, Poole into the pits. So Lehman gets past. So Lehman's going to have to blast a couple nice laps here. That's if he comes in on lap 27. So Lehman can turn some, some nice laps here. He can potentially get out ahead of Poole after he comes in. So well, and Salem is, track ahead of him. is still trying to work on uh, on Chris Moses. So if you're Salem, do you pit early? I mean, if it was me chasing Moses down, knowing the fuel economy of my car and the pace I potentially have, which looks like he may be quicker than Moses in some points, in some parts, maybe a couple three tenths. Do you come in a lap or two early and then hopefully Absolutely. come out a clear track and, and beat him once Moses comes in? Absolutely. Just get in, get your fuel, and get out and put some hot laps in. And Moses, Moses in the pits. Late decision comes in on lap 27. I think that was a head fake there. That was. I think so. So Moses comes in on lap 27, which is the halfway point. Montgomery's going to keep it out on track. He's got Hefner right behind him, and actually that was lap 26 for Moses, 27 just started. So Sabo in Parsons working lap, uh, working lap 27. So Moses comes in a lap shy. Lehman picks up some spots, so these guys coming in. Ricker is in. Moses uh, is away. Uh, is going to come out just ahead of Bjorn Heyman in 10th. John Luton running back in 14th. I suspect he hit it already. So yeah, going back to the competition index, yes. uh, Zabo is second. He is uh, Zabo in. one lap down as Zabo comes into the pits. What's Parsons going to do? Parsons comes in as well. We'll see. Hang on this battle here. We'll see if Parsons is able to come out. Ooh, oh, did he overshoot his box? He did. This is going to be close. Montgomery is out of fuel. You're kidding me. I am not he kidding. He is him. out of fuel. Took he's it too it late. Up. And well, he's out he might of fuel. not be. He, he has had some technical difficulties in the past, so the engine's running, barely. Back to Parsons. Parsons is away. Gets out ahead of of Zabo. Zabo with a mistake in the pits, overshooting his pit box, and he and Parsons comes out just ahead of Peter Zabo, and we saw Montgomery in the middle of the track. He is trying to make it. Montgomery's out. He's trying to coast into the pits. So we saw how difficult it was for Montgomery to get around Z uh, Moses, and no doubt these guys running similar setups, and this is going to be. An uphill battle for Zabo to try and get around Parsons. As long as Parsons can keep it clean here on this out lap, he should be good. Stunning turn of events here. Well, McKinney is showing uh, provisionally in P1, but he hasn't pitted yet. Yeah, McKinney still has to come into the pits. Hefner has pitted. Moses has come out ahead of Zach by uh, about a second. Yeah, there's no, not not a big gap there so it's going to take clean racing by Aaron Parsons to keep Peter Zabo off his tailpipe. Well Werner with a great stop. He is now up to six, well fifth I should say because McKinney still has the pit. McKinney could come out ahead of, of, uh, of I Werner. can't believe Montgomery made it to his pit box. Yeah, from, from P18 he is in. That is a huge mistake 
from Montgomery Jr. Not only does yeah. that affect, that's a huge blow in terms of the team championship for RPM Extreme. And that mistake from Zabo also potentially four points, five points lost. Well, you've got both, uh, you know, Kirk Bright and Montgomery way down, you know, Kirk Bright in 14th, Montgomery in 18th. You know, all of it, we really, he really, Montgomery really needed to put in a solid uh, effort tonight and stay up at the top. Maybe he is, oh, he's got too big a pit. Maybe he pulled the plug. On board with Zach Hefner, Zach and Moses. Literally neighbors, Jack. Did you know that? Absolutely. Oh, Moses running. Oh, well, that's his normal line, but I don't know if that's going to pay off. Well, it might. We've seen him do, run that line the whole race, but uh, yeah, we're able to power, power it's away odd. from it, it, It's an odd line, and you know, I, I just keep going back, you know, when I see stuff like that, Al, that surprises me. Uh, you know, the stuff that Brad has tried to teach me uh, for years now is um, sometimes, you know, you've got to find your own way around the track. Yeah. And your own way might not be the normal way, but it'll be faster for you. So it doesn't surprise me. So, yeah, these guys, uh, well, Moses has been racing with us since, well, for about 10, 11 years now since the season started. And I should say, I, I failed to mention this on Monday night, but Monday night was NAGP's 11th birthday. We've been around for 11 years, and uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty awesome that, uh, that we've stuck around this long. And, and all the support from everybody, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's It really goes a long way to provide you know, not only the server costs and all the other stuff that goes with it but you know it allows us to, to give the prizes that we give and, and uh, it's great and I thank everybody for, for all that but uh, Moses well, has been around since pretty much the beginning Zach Hefner a couple about three four seasons now uh, oh three, four, four. this side by side through the exit I think yeah, it's going to uh, be advantage Moses like once again. It's not going to happen. But yeah, this is talk about a small world. Hefner literally lives the next town over from Moses. And, uh, well, it has surprised me out. You know, expect at, some uh, cordial racing here. They've yes, actually uh, they've met up. They've I think Mo, uh, Hefner's running uh, a Rift, and Moses bought Hefner's triple screen. So you know. Don't expect, uh, don't expect any well, contact here. We'll see. You know, I, I've got to throw all those kudos you're throwing out to everybody that supported an AGP right back at you, Al. You've created a, a, a wonderful format for great camaraderie. Um, there's been some great friendships formed. Uh, you know, I've got uh, Joel Accor here in my hometown, Michael McKinday, Mark DeGraw. They're all Canadians. Um, it's just been super. So thank you, as I am following Zach Hefner, who has actually taken over from what Montgomery was doing. Yeah, Montgomery rejoins. I think he's done. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's, he's down, done. He's down three point seven laps. So yeah. uh, he didn't quite make it in. I wondered how he could coach that far into the pits, and I guess he couldn't make it. Oh, Moses taking a little wider than usual that time by. So. Looks like Hefner may make his way past. He's Moses got... not giving up, though. No, absolutely and not. And look at the power of that Nissan. I can't believe that. They're going to be side by side into turn five. And Hefner gets the pass made. So a mistake from Moses has allowed Hefner to get past. We'll see how long this lasts here. Moses can recover that position. But uh, looking out front, Parsons remains out front by a second over Zabo and stretching out that lead. Yeah, you know, not, not not a huge surprise. I mean, their pace was so similar, Al. I mean, that that whole pit rotation, you know, uh, was the difference there. You know, a little mistake on Peter's part, you know, overshooting his pit box and. Uh, once the thunder from down under got out in front, I think he is going to fight tooth and nail to hang on to that. So 
going back to uh, what you were saying, it, it really is amazing. I mean, we we have it's a group of us that all went to the Rolex back in January. I mean, it's just great to see that the league has formed all these great relationships. You know, I know the Saturday guys are all really close. Ian, Chuck, John Wathen, uh, Lou, a bunch of guys. And those guys are really close. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Rally from the UK comes over here. I met him a couple times. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just awesome, you know. And just Poole and Werner really close. I know they've met up. Um, both from different parts of the country. I met Werner uh, this past January, and one of the nicest guys. You know, all, all the guys out here, some of the nicest guys you've ever met. It's just great. So, yeah, it well, really it, is a know, great community more than anything. It's turned it from something that's virtual into something that's virtual real. No, it is real. It's real, and it's, it's, it's lasting. You know, it's going to, these friendships are going to, Go on forever, long before, long after with with them racing. I, I'm sure uh, we're all staying in touch. So well, great. that being said, Al, you know it can't go on forever unless everybody digs into their pocketbook <laughs> and throws a couple of bucks. That's why. I, that's why I love you, Jack. Yeah, you know, and, and, and help help keep this format going because I'll tell you something. I've looked. You're not going to find a better place to race anywhere online so dig in throw us a few bucks and heck you know what monday and thursday night uh, you know join us uh, we've got room we'll make room and we'll make sure that uh everybody enjoys himself just like some of the newcomers uh chris koskow and matt lehman uh newcomers and they look like they're having a a heck of a time here as newcomers to nagp so Kevin Kirkbride running up on Bjorn Heyman here. This is for 14th. So I'm sorry, 13th. Kirkbride has uh, gotten his lap back after he stopped, and is uh, he's giving Heyman the business here, flashing his lights. But Heyman's not the you know he's he gonna earn that spot from Bjorn, good old Bjorn. And uh, you know what, Bjorn doesn't see those flashing headlights. He's just gonna keep driving oh, and, and, let, and let and let and let Kevin drive around him. But you know, as I've always said, Al, you know, it's incumbent on the passing driver. So if you want that spot, make the pass happen. Yeah, no, I mean you gotta earn it for sure. So that lead up front is uh, 1.4 seconds now, with, uh, 20 laps to go. following Kirk Bride, running a championship leader, running in 14th, trying to wait, make his way past Bjorn Heyman in 13th, and Bjorn not having nothing to do with it. He don't care if you're leading the championship. Well, no, he, you know, he's, he's looking at his, you know, his timing, and Kirk Bride's in 14th. Heyman's in 13th, and you know Bjorn's fighting for that 13th finish. So moving further up here, after Hefner has gotten past Moses, that lead Big has gap. gone up to about four seconds. Yeah, so I wonder if Moses might have made a little, couple, couple, three mistakes, but um, McKinde, meanwhile, has uh, begun to close up on Moses. So that Ferrari of McKinde. These guys who think the Ferrari is no good, they may want to uh, have some... Oh, it's McKinney oh, got a turn. Oh, oh, I think what? he's got oh. some lag there. Oh, what happened? Uh, we lagged right out. I'm gone. Are you out? My whole screen just went dead. Oh, boy. Are you still racing, Al? No, I'm, I'm gone. I don't know... The server seems to be unavailable. Yeah. Uh, we were, geez, um, 
I, I can't even. I think the whole server went down. Uh, I disconnected. So the server is up. For me and Jack, we're gone. I don't know if uh, Very some, odd. Kind of, some kind of issues going on on this side of the country. Hold on. Got to check the live timing, see if it's actually still up. So, yeah, there are a number of guys still on the server racing. Um, so it looks like for myself and a few other guys, we are out. Um, yeah, I'll, my, uh, I can't even, I'm trying to make a connection. Uh, but my, uh, my machine will not connect to the server. I am not, I am not on track. One guy from Perth, one from the home. No. What? Are we? I think I bet about everyone's been disconnected. Congrats, as a. I thought I thought uh, servers uh, faults are half distance, but the check them. Yeah. All right. It looks like the uh, looks like everybody has dropped connection, and since we are beyond half distance, then uh, that's going to make Aaron Parsons the winner. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, Jack, that's, yeah. that's going to be it. Uh, either am I, Al. Um, but, uh, Al, who called that one? That was you, Jack. That was a good call by you. Uh, you nailed it. Let me see. I just, uh, I just get these Fengali moments, you, you know, every once in a while. I definitely didn't call a hockey game tonight, though. No, you did not. <laughs> That's something you certainly did not do. All right. Yeah, so that's going to make uh, Parsons a winner since we'll be on half distance. So that's it. Jack, unfortunately, sorry for everybody out there, the uh, situation that happened here tonight, but uh, Parsons is going to be your winner here, and uh, you know, that's something uh, Peter in second, and it looks like Hefner in third, maybe? Third, yeah. Nothing we have any control over. That's uh, just the way the internet goes sometimes, but uh, well, we'll be back uh, next week, uh, next Monday at uh, Bridgehampton for the open wheel race. And then after that, next Thursday, we'll be at Interlagos. Interlagos, yeah, for round number 11. So sometimes these things do happen, but unfortunately, um, it happened here tonight. And uh, Parsons is going to be your winner. So sorry for the short night. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, that's going to be it. Have a good night.